Hey, so one of the most common questions that I get from people who want to build out their portfolio is how do I start? Like how do I make my first UI project, my first app? Well, it's pretty simple. And if you're just starting to build your portfolio, it's really good to start with an app because the canvas is a little bit smaller than a website or a landing page. So it's actually a lot easier to have something right away. It's easier to create it, it's easier to make it look good, and it's a little bit less work than, than a full website. And obviously for a better portfolio, you're gonna need the websites as well, but if you're just starting out, start with apps. And I believe it's actually best to learn by doing stuff instead of memorizing them. So the way I'm gonna show you is a little bit slower, but it's really good when you're starting out because you're gonna remember where every element of the screen is and how to stack them together, how to position them next to each other and how to make it look good. So whether you're using Sketch, Figma, XD or anything else, you can create a frame or an artboard and just pick a device. And I suggest you pick an iPhone first. If you pick the most standard iPhone, chances are there's gonna be a lot of mockups and so very nice devices that you can actually put your screen into and make it look even better. And as a general rule, it's best to design for the smaller possible screens, so don't pick the largest iPhone Max, but instead pick the iPhone Pro, the standard iPhone 11 or iPhone 12 Pro. Okay, click on it and there you have it. You have your rectangle that's gonna be the screen of your amazing future app. But before you start putting things onto that canvas, it's best to set up some boundaries, so some standard elements of that screen that exist there every time. And these are the status bar at the very top. Then you have the nav bar just lower to it. And on Android, it's called the action bar, but it generally is the main navigation bar that also titles the screen. So you have a screen title, your back arrows, sometimes a hamburger menu and your action icons there. So let's start with the status bar. So in Sketch or Figma, you can actually use an integrated iOS library to add a typical status bar. And you can either choose a light or a dark color, but it doesn't really matter that much because you can always change it. So just click and add your status bar to your project. And then by clicking and dragging down from the rulers, you can actually create a guideline or a guide that shows where the status bar ends. And this is basically a zone where you don't really do anything. So just don't put stuff in there because it doesn't matter. And once you have the guide, you can actually hide the status bar because you're not gonna need it for the portfolio piece. It just adds a little bit of extra visual clutter. So it's not really that essential to show it in the portfolio but it's really good to have that safe space from the top left completely empty. Okay, now it's time to add the nav bar or the navigation bar, but they do change quite a lot and they're not really set in stone. The guidelines state that they should have a certain height, but you can create them higher. You can create them with a custom shape, like a rounded one or a completely diagonal one. It doesn't really matter that much, but it needs to have at least the space that the guidelines are telling you. And that size changes from time to time. So the best way to actually learn what it is and to learn it by heart is to go to your settings app on the iPhone, take a screenshot and then paste that screenshot onto the artboard. And that way you can set the guideline and once you have the guide in, just remove the screenshots and you're good to go. And doing it with that screenshot instead of memorizing a number for the height is also good because it gives you a context of how big the things are on the number. So how big is usually the font on it and things like that. So when you start building your own app, you're not gonna make a huge font that takes the entire place of the navbar or are you not gonna add icons that are too big or too small because you'll have a reference from the actual app that everybody is using like the settings app or any other app that actually has a defined navbar. So at this point you should end up with your screen divided into three parts. The very top part is the status bar. You just keep clear of that. You just leave it empty, leave it alone. Then you have the navbar which basically will be your main app navigation and then you have the rest of the design underneath. So now it's time to plan a grid for it. But grids can be scary and they can be intimidating because there is like a lot of different values and things and patterns and suggestions and people are always trying to tell you that their grid is better and they're like, you need to do it this way or that way. And there are all those various kinds of grid, but to make a mobile app and to make it work, you don't really need a full grid. Because the most important thing to set your layout in space is the margins and specifically the left and the right margin. 
And I don't really have to tell you this hopefully, but they need to be the same. And the size of the margin, which is a number, it needs to be big enough for the app to have enough breathing room to be readable. Okay, but what value should I add to my margins, right? Well, I could try to explain a couple of different approaches to this or a couple of different values that you could use depending on the specific uh, use case of the app. But if you really want to just make a nice portfolio piece and to have a little bit fun designing, just stick with 24. And in some future videos, I'm going to tell you why I mostly use 24 and 32 for the margins. But for now, 24 is going to be a safe bet for you. So just create vertical guides at 24 points and then at 24 from the right side as well. And since we use 24, it means that we're going to be using an 8-point grid. So you can use the number 8, 16 and 24 to set out the spacing between all of the other elements on your screen. So if the elements are in the same group, like a couple of different labels next to a photo, then you can use the 8 and 16 spacing. But if something is a new group, like the next label or the next photo, then you can use the 24 or even 32 between them. That way you will have the right hierarchy and everything will be clear and readable to the user. And also it's gonna look good, because basically grids make things look good. And that is because our brains like to simplify stuff. We're subconsciously trying to find some order in the chaos, so we're looking for a grid. And if there is no grid, it's gonna take a little bit longer, like a couple milliseconds, because our brains are still pretty fast. But those couple milliseconds add up over the course of the screen, and the longer our brain has to think about stuff, the less it likes what it's looking at. So if you want people to love your project, it needs to be very gritty. And one cool idea to actually start your design is to block frame it. Basically, it means that you're going to be adding rectangles and circles as bounding boxes for the future content. So instead of photos, you can add some circles and instead of the text, you can add some rectangles. And that way, it's going to be actually easier for you to keep the right spacing between the elements because they're a lot easier to align. And also, it's going to give you an idea of what roughly the app is going to look like. So here is an example of us using this knowledge to recreate a popular photo sharing app. And it's really good if the height of the elements that you're creating, you know, those circles and those rectangles, uh, is also dividable by 8. So once you have the heights and the spacing coming from that same grid, and they are all consistent and properly aligned, you can start adding the real content. So you can start adding some text, and you can start adding some images, or a logo, and things like that. But keep in mind that it's really best if you can keep that content within the boundaries of those block frames. And then once you have the real content in, you can start hiding the block frames. And you can quickly see that this interface, even though it's really, really simple, it kind of clicks with you. It sticks and you can actually see that it makes sense. You can follow it along. You can read it. It's, uh, it, just, it just works. So you can create templates like this for yourself to start your projects faster or to align them better. But in general, the more projects you do, the more comfortable you're going to be and the more automatic it's actually going to become for you. So keep those boxes aligned properly. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time. Cheers.